Hey, this is Craig the Pool Man with Pool Specialist. Today we have a short video for you on how to configure a Pentair Easy Touch automation controller. You'll have to download the app from the Pentair website. I prefer to do this on a desktop or a laptop. It makes it a whole lot easier. You can do it on your phone. There is an app for it, but you do give up some of the functionality so again I would encourage you to do it on a laptop or a desktop when you open the app it's gonna come up like this you can click on options and then you'll come down and you should see your protocol adapter on the local system you could if you don't see it you could type the number of the protocol adapter into the system name but generally speaking if it doesn't show up on the local system it's not going to find it when you type in the system name so just click on this and then we are actually going to configure screen logics this screen is going to come up and you, what you're going to find is it's going to tell you what model you have this is an easy touch pool spa and it's only a four auxiliary the controller firmware the protocol adapter version the protocol adapter number and then what is the build for the protocol adapter we'll then select configure screen logic you'll want to put in the current date today you'll set the time both hours and minutes I like to automatically adjust for daylight savings time here in the United States we use Fahrenheit um, we haven't come up with the, to be in agreement with the rest of the world that uses the metric system people that are from Europe or South America you may want to use Celsius if you feel more comfortable with it I like to have a pool summary and the weather and you can get the weather simply by typing your zip code in over here go to the next screen okay here's where our configuration starts so first we've got the pool all right this is a default it's going to be on with freeze protect and it's going to show in the pool section next thing I want to do is because I have a special name I'm going to go ahead and set up a custom name and that custom name I'm going to set up as jet slow normally it would come in as user one and then you will change it and type in jet slow once you set that name you're done you can then take any of the rest of these and change those to other usernames that you feel more comfortable with. We're going to go ahead and we're going to set up Auxiliary 1 as Jets Low. And that we're going to put in the Feature section. This is actually going to be our jet pump for our spa. I'm going to go ahead and take auxiliary 2 and we're going to call this pool lights and you're going to want to select this as being IntelliBright and then that will automatically put it in the light section uh, of course I if you just had regular lights you would select it as a light but IntelliBright is the Pentair color LED lights and that way you can go and select which color you'd like which pattern you'd like when you actually turn the lights on so we're not going to put anything on auxiliary three for now okay very important we're going to actually we need the regular speed for the jets so we're going to take feature one and we are going to call this jets and we'll leave it as generic we want to make sure that our spa jets are on with freeze protect so we've named feature one as jets we're going to then take feature two and we are going to call it pool high okay so now we've got our circuits all set up of course you have lots of feature circuits to work with one of the things that you want to take a look at is what section it actually shows up in so the spa is going to show up in spa section 
Jets are going to show up. Jets low are going to show up in the feature section. Pool lights are going to show up in the light section. We're not using auxiliary three, so we're going to not show it. Pool is going to show up in the pool section. Jets are going to show up in the spa section. And pool high, we want to show in the pool section. I'm going to add one more feature to this, and that feature is going to be a spillway. And the circuit function for that is going to be a spillway. What this does is this will change the actuator on the return side of the system and allow all the water to go to the spa. So in some cases you would call it spa fill and many of the the pool spa combos then of course have a spillway where the water will vault out into the pool and it gives you a very attractive and serene type of situation where you just see the water spilling and you hear the water spilling next this is where we would come in and we would create or assign a valve so the default is we have an intake valve which will change from pool mode to spa mode and a return valve which will change from pool to spa mode and then the return valve if you turn on spillway will also turn on however let's just say that you had bubblers then you could assign the bubblers to this actual um, valve A and those bubblers could be on a feature as well so that way you don't have to use up an auxiliary in order to turn on your bubblers or whatever water feature you choose next we're gonna go and we're gonna define our speeds for our pumps okay so first of all the pool we're gonna set this low we're gonna set this to 30 gallons per minute and the reason that we do that is we're going to run pool 24-7. So we are always going to be running this pump. The pump's going to last longer. The pool is going to stay a lot clearer. At 30 gallons a minute, the salt cell will always have the flow going. And so, therefore, we'll always produ be producing chlorine from our salt system. Running a, an IntelliFlow pump at 30 gallons per minute is equivalent to running a 60 watt light bulb. All right, next, what we want to do is we want to define pool high. So we have pool high, and 80 gallons a minute is about right for pool high. You may want to turn it up. The whole purpose of pool high when we get into our programming is we're going to turn our pool high on in the morning for a couple hours so that we can clear off the top of the pool and this will make sure that all the water flow and all the debris is coming into the skimmers. Next we have pool heater. Okay, you could do pool heater or you could actually do either, either heater. Now, for the pool heater, you want to have 60 gallons a minute as a minimum. For the spa heater, we're going to do 60 gallons a minute. Freeze protect, we're going to do 30 gallons a minute. I like to add in the spa and of course the spa I am going to do at well we'll do this one at 90 gallons a minute and then of course we have the spillover or the spillway and I'm actually going to do that all the way at 120 gallons a minute. So I've got my pool, my pool high, my pool heater, my spa heater, freeze protect. Of course, freeze protect you want running at a very low speed. And because when freeze protect kicks in, it may run for days. It depends on where you are. My spa, my spillway. Okay, now I had made a mention that in the program, we're going to run pool 24-7. And then we're going to run pool high in the morning. And what happens is we do not have to turn off 
the 30 gallons a minute because the higher speed takes priority. So if we take pool high and we put it at 80 gallons a minute, it will override the 30 gallons a minute. And I tend to run pool high in the morning for about three hours, and then I will run the spillway in the evening for three to four hours. That will give me my grand effect, and it will also help to clear off the top of the pool. So that is our pool pump. And of course, that's pump number one, which means that the pump itself assigned on it will be device number one. In another video, we actually demonstrated how to set the device to pump number two. And that was the spa pump that we did. So we're going to take jet slow and we're going to run them at 30 gallons a minute. And then we're going to take the jets and we're going to run them at 120 gallons a minute. We want nice, robust jets. We do want this on with freeze protect, so that's going to be 30 gallons a minute. Again, when I'm in freeze protect, it may be running for days, so therefore I want it to run at a very low speed. So we've got uh, pump one, which is device one on the pumps, and that is our pool pump. We have pump two, which is a spa pump, and that is device two on the pump. Okay, if you happen to have a spa side switch, you can configure it here. They have the four button, the 10 button, and the quick touch. Uh, most people don't really use spa side switches anymore. They've become kind of defunct in favor of running everything off of your phone. So now we've got everything configured and we can just hit finish. So we come back to this screen and then if we close this screen, we'll go back to our initial screen logic connect screen. Now if we come and we say start screen logic, you will get this display. Okay, so we're gonna click on the little fish up here and then you can see we have our pool section, we have our spa section, I don't have the temperatures or the temperature sensors wired in because this is a demonstration. We can, of course, turn on pool. We can turn on pool high. Come over to features, and you can see we have jet slow, and we have spillway. Now, let's talk about what are we going to do about setting up a program. So schedule, we're going to add a program, and we're going to take the pool, and typically I like to run it from 6 a.m. to 5.59 a.m. And that way it's going to run 24-7. Okay, so that is our pool. And as I had mentioned, I like to clear off the pool in the morning. So I'm going to add another circuit and I'm going to call this pool high. All right, then I'm going to take pool high and let's just run it from 8 in the morning until 11 in the morning, just for demonstration purposes. Typically, I usually start this at 6, and I run it till 9 or 10. So that's our pool high. I'm going to add another program in here, and this one I'm going to use Jets Low. And Jets Low, I'm simply going to run from 8 a.m. until 8.05 a.m. or let's even make it 8.10 because we're not really pulling a whole lot of power. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this because let's just say that you used your spa oh say in March or April and then the water got too hot it became hot out so you didn't start using your spa again until November. So now all that water has stayed stagnant in that pump basket and in those lines. As soon as you turn that on, you're going to get an algae bloom in your pool and it's going to destroy your evening of trying to use your spa. So this way it keeps everything flushed, it keeps chlorine in there, keeps algae out, and when you go to use your spa, it's going to work just the way you want it to. Um, 
So this is a, a very smart idea to run every single pump you have every day. It will also add to the longevity of the pump. By running it every day, you've got all the parts moving. You prevent the rust from building up on your bearings in the pump. So that's how I would set up the schedule for the jet pump. Going to add one more in here, and this is going to be for the spillway. And our spillway, we are going to run from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. This way, when my wife and I get home, we can grab a, a bottle of wine, a couple glasses, go hang out at the pool, and enjoy the view of the pool and the serenity of the water coming over the spillway. From a functionality of the pool, this is going to help clear the top of the pool in the evening, give me a little bit more flow, so that all the debris that's on the top of the pool doesn't wind up at the bottom of the pool, because that is the point of the skimmers. That's the simplicity of this. I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you found it educational, drop us a like. Please feel free to sign up for our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and have a great day.